think of all the Gospels, I like Mark the best. Uh, Mark is a universal Gospel, and I especially like the structure of Mark. It makes it uh, very easy for me to teach. If you're going through Mark, you go through the public ministry, you get to the near the end of chapter 8, and it's the end of the public ministry, and Jesus has been with His disciples. They've been there for uh, probably a couple of years. And Jesus says, you know, who do other people say that I am? And, you know, Elijah, a prophet. And it's like Jesus says, okay, fess up. It's time for you to make your commitment. Who do you think that I am? And Peter, speaking for the twelve, most likely, says, you are the Christ, the Messiah. What happens then structurally in the Gospel of Mark is fascinating. Because what you have are three distinct units. And the repetition of the units is really important. Uh, you have this Peter's confession is the hinge, and then the way the units work is that you have a, a death prophecy by Jesus, you have a misunderstanding of what discipleship is, and then Jesus corrects it. And then you go for a while, and then you have another death prediction, another misunderstanding of discipleship, and then a correction, and, and the third time. And that leads up to the Passion. And that structure, Mark, has is, is always made it very easy to teach. But it also illustrates a very, very important point. Okay, you've got to put yourself in the disciples' shoes. They, at this point, still think that it's going to be an earthly kingdom, and they're going to sit on 12 thrones, and they're going to rule the world. And so probably a very earthly kind of uh, understanding of Messiah and the kingdom of God. So when Jesus says, I'm going to Jerusalem and die, you know, they're going, well, no, no, that, that's, not, that's not the way it is. That, that's not what I signed up for. And, and Peter takes, takes Jesus aside, and the translations don't do the Greek justice. I don't, I don't know if they, you know, English could. It says that, that Peter rebuked, epitimao, uh, Jesus. It's a very strong word. It's got an emphatic preposition on it. And he, I mean, he just tore into Jesus. And this is not the way it's going to happen. And it's very interesting that Jesus turns. He makes sure the other eleven are listening. He wanted them to hear it. He turns to Peter and he epitomatos him. He rebukes him right back. He just ripped into, Jesus, into uh, Peter. You're thinking the things of God, not the things of... You're thinking the things of man, not the things of God. Okay, so you have this misunderstanding. And then Jesus says, if you want to be my follower, there's three things. You must deny yourself, you got to take up your cross, and you got to follow me. And this is one of those instances where knowing Greek really just opens up the meaning of the text. Uh, because in Greek, you can be very specific that okay, this is an event that happens once, or it's an event that happens over a period of time, or this is an event that just is. It's not tied to time. And Greek is a very flexible aspect system. And if you look at the aspect of those words, you have, uh, if you want to follow me, you must deny yourself and then take up your cross. So that's the word I wanted to focus on. What, what does that mean? What does it mean to take up your cross? I mean, the denial is certainly uh, beginning at conversion, and following Him is an ongoing process, but what is this taking up the cross? And it's interesting, in, in the book of Mark, it's not really clear. Uh, the taking up your cross could be a one-time event. It could, be, it could be your conversion experience. I've denied myself, my ambitions, the things that I wanted. I'm going to turn my control of my life over to God, and I'm going to live as one crucified to myself and living for Him. And then that's how I follow Him. That's certainly a possible way to interpret Mark. It's interesting then when you get to Luke, Luke helps us by having another word. It says, you must deny yourself and daily take up your cross and follow me. Now, it, the tendency is if you don't know much Greek, you could look at it in Mark and you could come away with the wrong understanding. And a little bit of Greek, uh, if, you're, if it's not balanced with humility, uh, can be dangerous. But you can come away with a, a misunderstanding. But when you go to Luke, you realize that this rather indefinite Greek construction behind take up your cross is actually an ongoing, it's a continuous, it's an imperfective, if, if you know the grammar, uh, kind of idea. In other words, what does it mean to follow Christ? It means that daily you say no to your ambitions, your personal ambitions, your, the, the things that I want that God may not want, and then you take up your cross. In other words, you live as one who, like Christ, died to his own personal ambitions and lived purely for God. And every day we do this. That's how you follow Christ. And so, if you look at the Greek and you do your synoptic parallels, uh, you can get an accurate understanding of what discipleship is. You know, at, the, at conversion, 
uh, that's what conversion is, isn't it? We, we raise our hands and we say, I want to accept Christ in my life. I'm willing to admit that I, I'm a sinner, that I live outside of relationship with God, and that Jesus' death on the cross is the only means by which I can enter into a loving relationship with God. And so I have to, nothing in my hands I bring, but that I cross, I cling, as the old song has it. Uh, another way to say it is that the ground is a level at the foot of the cross. We all stand, rich and poor, famous, infamous, not famous. Um, we all stand at level ground, and we have nothing to give to God. We deny ourselves, and we die to ourselves. That's what conversion is. But the problem, of course, with the Christian life, isn't it, is that we tend to keep climbing back up on the throne of our life, that we've, we've left it, and then as life goes on, we go, you know, I'm really not that bad. Um, Jesus didn't have to work that hard to save me. In fact, I think I kind of helped him along the process. I mean, we, there's this tendency to climb back up on the throne of our lives and to take control. And what this most central passage on discipleship is saying is not only at conversion, but every day, daily, thank you, Luke, uh, daily we have to remind ourselves we have we died to ourselves and we live by the power of Christ through the power of the Spirit and we live for Him. We live as someone who is, is crucified to this world and we live as Christ lived for God and God alone. A little bit of Greek helps.